Oh, I'm a bit out of breath, sorry. Hello, Sarah. Oh, catch my breath. Hey, James. Uh, comments aren't pinning again. I don't know why they're not pinning. Who cares? Instagram's obviously changed what they're doing. Oh, just catch my breath. Okay. Uh, today's episode of Isolation Live, I am talking with singer-songwriter and humanitarian Martin Joseph. Uh, Martin and I have met a bunch of times on, on the road. I think last time we saw each other was either... Focus Wales Festival or Between the Trees probably, whichever one of those was most recent. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm sure all of you, if not most of you, will have heard Martin's music or heard of Martin and uh, yeah, we've crossed paths many times and he's a really lovely dude, so I'm looking forward to having a little chat with him when he logs on. How's everybody doing while we're waiting? I'm out of breath because sometimes, <laughs> embarrassingly, sometimes these evening episodes that I do, by the time I get to the evening, I'm flagging a little bit and I'm drinking coffee at 6 p.m., which is obviously not a great idea. But if I'm out of breath, I, I can't believe I'm admitting this, but over there I just like jump around like a madman do some like ear punching and stuff to wake myself up so that's why I'm catching my breath <laughs> ah here is the man himself Let's see if we can bring him in touch wood hey Look, I'm not. I'm losing you, bud. Oh no! Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. You got me. Yeah, crystal clear. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Oh, you're a bit, you're a bit jumpy. Yeah, I know. I don't know why. I got full uh, signal and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Am I still jumpy? A little bit, but maybe maybe if maybe we just if I, see, yeah. see what happens. I, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go and do that. Technology, man. Technology <laughs> sucks. There we go. You got me now? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Let's give it a swing. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How, how are you doing, man? How's your week been? Um, oh, it's, it's okay. I've actually got a... Um, Richard the plumber upstairs right now, so I've been uh, back before. He's just sorting out. Uh, oh man, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It was just uh, uh, just bad timing. That's all. But uh, it's okay. He, he's uh, he's he's doing his thing. Uh, yeah, my week so far. Yeah, it's been good. I've written a couple of songs and um, just running errands and uh, working on the golf swing. <laughs> uh, uh, and then you know, hearing how. Uh, some some gigs are just being cancelled or reduced into like we're, I think we're allowed two people in eight hundred seaters now that type of thing you know so it's, <laughs> it, it's it's not looking good but it's not looking good right now as if shows weren't money makers before right oh yeah I know, <laughs> I know exactly but uh, it, it's it's fine it's all good uh, I'm just trying to trying to find the hope in each day through the simplest of things but um, these these are the strangest of times and uh, there are moments when I, I, I feel a bit lost to be honest you know it's just um, I, I think I probably look at the news too much um, maybe and, and so I'm trying to let go of 
trying to decipher and understand absolutely everything because who because it's un, it's 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 impenetrable in some ways anyway isn't it? there's so much information who knows what the uh where we go from here but um so but i'm good i i i feel fine you know i i um I, I, I've always thought of, you know, I, I play a lot of shows, Dan, like I'm sure I know you do. And, and I, I've always, for the last 30 years uh, or more, I've thought, God, if I could get six months off, that would be amazing, you know. Um, yeah. And lo and behold, it happened. Uh, uh, the problem is that, yeah, you know. The, the, boy the, forward, <laughs> yeah, the problem is that, you know, I'm not out there doing my job and, and uh, making a living. So, uh, so yeah, but it, it, it's good. And I'm, you know, I realize uh, I'm very blessed compared to, to men uh, and uh, grateful for that and trying to uh, carry on the work of um, bringing hope through the music, you know, and what you do. And so, you know, I'm sure you've been doing these online shows and, uh, uh, and I released an EP and stuff. So, so I've I've uh, I have not been uh, lying down doing nothing for sure, despite uh, despite the current uh, circumstances. That's good to hear, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm speaking to a lot of other musicians, you know, saying trying to kind of struggle in with our place in the world as an art, as artists and songwriters and and singers and stuff, and trying to figure out what we can do within the current world to make some sort of difference, because obviously you've got everybody that's making an immediate physical frontline difference and and it's i know a lot of people are kind of trying to figure out how they can help as well and, mm. and yeah. um but you know a lot of people are talking about the the solace and and the kind of the a different world that music can bring to people which is is super important yeah absolutely absolutely uh, incredibly important right now and um and so we, you know we're we, we're uh, we're having to find new ways of of doing that, you know. Whether you know we have large audiences or small audiences, whatever it might be, you know. Um, and I, you know, there are so. I think people. Well, well, the weather's getting worse again now, obviously. But I think with the nicer weather we've had, people have you know gone outdoors. So at first, in, in April, May, there was we did a lot of online shows, you know, and everyone was doing them. Um, so I, I think people leapt at that because they wanted to hear live music. But they, I, I think with the, the nicer weather that we've had lately, uh, those have sort of, you know, got a little bit quieter. Uh, I was trying to sort of pace myself in that because I know some were doing them like every other night, which is mm -hmm. fine if you if you want to do that. But um, I, I've just done one every four, every month or so, basically. In fact, I'm doing one on Sunday, which will be my first for five and a half weeks. Um, Great. Yeah, but just trying to um, just just find ways of of keeping the community uh, that surrounds your art, whoever, again, you might be. And, and that, you know, that's a strategy that I think is good in, in good times and, and, and bad times. But um, mm -hmm. um, people, you know, I've had the most incredible letters from people saying things that are, you know, incredibly humbling, like, you know, we really need your music right now or that sort of thing, you know, and it's, it's, it's to feel the, the privilege and the weight of that is, is, um, is extraordinary. And, and, um, and always sort of goes beyond that feeling of just being an entertainer or someone whose job it is to make someone's foot tap and, and provide music while they cook a meal in the back. You know, it, it, it's bigger than that. It always has been for me. And I know you lean the same way Dan. And, and uh, so um, I'm anxious to continue to, to uh, provide that for those people that, um, that follow uh, what I do. Um, we've uh, for 20 what was it 26 years now we've actually sent out a fan magazine since 1996 called the passport key no um, way. yeah yeah in fact I'll, I'll lift one off my that is so cool yeah, well, it, it, it is uh have i got one here somewhere I, I usually have a couple of copies um don't know where they are um well I'm, I'm, anyway but we've sent those out uh people joined um uh, and for ten pounds a year, you've got six, three magazines, and um, uh, and a free CD every year, you know. And uh, that proved to be um, really popular. And we've done that for twenty six years. But sadly, um, I can't find one. <laughs> uh, sadly, because of, um, of of circumstances uh, beyond my control, we've, we're having to stop because Nikki, who's worked for me full time for thirteen years, is um, is one of these long term COVID sufferers, and she. Um, has literally been uh, completely wiped out by COVID now for five months, unable to literally lift an arm and 
uh, walk very far. And um, so we've had to take the difficult decision to um, actually uh, put an end to that. I've just, uh, in fact, I recorded my 60th birthday show that, that I did five weeks ago. So I recorded that and we put that together as the last passport key to go out, as it were. Uh, num issue number 71 <laughs> uh, yeah. since, since three years since since 1996 um, and that will go out and then and then um, so again it, it's it's that that was a way through the years of, of just watering that garden those people that come to you you know and, and to uh, people still like the tactility of that in in a digital age you know so um so that's sort of gone by the wayside now, uh, just because it has to. Uh, in times moving on, but I've, I've got some other ideas now of, of some online stuff to um, uh, create, uh, move that forward in, in the digital age, where I can provide even more. Yeah, than, yeah. yeah, other ways. Of, yeah, so something yeah. like that, Patreon or something like that. You know, where 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 I can, uh, I, I guess, be closer to people on a on a on a. On a on a weekly basis by uploading stuff and, and, you know, having sessions like this, um, whatever it might be. And, and maybe, you know, giving guitar lessons or showing people how I play, I don't know, Cardiff Bay or something, um, things that people have been asking me for some time. So it's a way of, of creating community now, uh, in the digital media, but we've just let go of the physical one after 26 yeah. years. So, um, so that's kind of cool. I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, and, um, it proved very popular, you know? So, um, so oh, that's, that's great, man. I, I, like, I, I found actually over the past six months that sort of the opposite happened to what I was expecting in that I found that people, especially in the music community, but across all community, have uh, almost become closer in a way, even though we're physically much further apart, mm. that everybody is much more open to talk and open up more and they they seem to have a lot of people have seemed to have kind of had realizations within themselves about what is important instead of other things and yeah. it's actually yeah. you know in in certain respects has been it's shone quite a nice light on on community you know absolutely i, I think it has shown our better side uh, there's some you know there's been moments of, of um, our worst sides but for the for the most part i think um you know even that when we were clapping the NHS on the streets, you know, I was sort of looking at neighbors that I'd never met yet, you know, across the street yeah, you know, yeah. I recently moved. And, um, and, you know, I, I think it was awkward a little bit, you know, but it was great. And I, and, and, and so you met people for the first time, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, just, just, uh, I've noticed a, a, a general kindness. I, I hope that remains because, you know, we, we've had um, across 50 years, you know, there's always been, moments like this of, of catastrophe and, and disaster or, or um, suffering, whatever it might be. I mean, that, that, you know, I mean, and, and it's, it's a reminder too, that these things that we're going through have been part of people in the developing world's everyday life for, for many, many years, you know, we're just getting a bit of a taste of it for ourselves, but um, we've had these opportunities to, to really turn things around um, and do some really good and, and change things, change direction, you know. And this is such a strange time with that big election coming up in America in November, and um, obviously the you know the the questions that we have as to when life might get back to some resemblance of normal. Uh, people can go back to uh, making a living and, and uh, hugging people again and not being reserved about it. Uh, and, but in the midst of all that, I, I, I feel it like you're saying, there's a tangible sense of, of, um, of, uh, of people drawing closer, despite the fact that we're not allowed to do that in terms of the rules. You know, I, 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 yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I feel it. And, um, and of course, art can, can really help that. And uh, it's important that we um, remember that and, and each to do our little bit and, and, uh, and lend a helping hand where we can, yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah, like I found personally over the past few months that like, I think normally I'm kind of pretty reclusive when it comes to writing and recording and all that sort of stuff. But uh, just realise in a really big way how valuable and how much I enjoy being around and making things with other people, yeah. whether that be music yeah. or whether it be artistic or not, you know? Yeah. It's a it's an individual thing, that isn't it? I, I'm kind of um, 
I'm kind of shy just by general nature. Um, my guitar was the way that, you know, even in, in school in the early days, it was my way of, you know, raising my chin uh, and say, hi, hello, everybody, you know. And, and so uh, I, I can hide behind that a little bit, you know, in terms of um, when people see us on platforms doing our thing, they, they say, oh, God, that takes a lot of guts or, you know, wow. But, uh, you know, you, you learn a, you learn a trade or you, you have a set of tools in your hand that allows you to um, make a certain mark, uh, as it were. But it's not necessarily uh, something that you carry around all the time, you know. So if I go into a, a social situation where I'm not, you know, I'm just like, oh, who's this guy? You know, you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty quiet and, and, and shy and, 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 you know, until something gets me going, uh, <laughs> I need to raise my voice, whatever. But, but, but I, I, I'm not a, a natural uh, sort of socializer and, and someone that uh, uh, I was never the uh, center of attention at parties or anything like that, you know. So, uh, so when it comes to writing, um, uh, I haven't really done a lot of co-writing across my what, 38, 40 years now. Um, and it's primarily been in a remote situation where, you know, someone would sense, I remember meeting Tom Robinson in, in, the, in the 90s and uh, he came down to, uh, I don't know, saw me play open to someone and, uh, oh, we're on a TV program together, that's right. And then he said, we should write some songs together. And I, and I got, I was petrified, you know, because you know, Tom was a pop star, you know, and and, uh, yeah. and I thought, oh my gosh, no, you know. and um, But he sent me a, an A4 sheet of paper with all these one, sentence manifestos with ideas for songs you know and, and that, that's how we did it you know and we did end up writing together and, uh, and, and my biggest co-writer has been a poet called Stuart Henderson and Stuart has just sent me lyrics through the or poems through the years which I've put music around you know that type of thing so oh, right. um so I, I haven't done a lot of, of really that uh sitting in a room and saying okay what you got and, and uh, but maybe um maybe uh it's time to step out of that into the, yeah uh, I, like like you say, everything I'd done up until very recently had been in a room on my own, my own words and my own thoughts. Mm. And then I was very much kind of scared, if I'm honest, to kind of go and, and, and go into that process because it's such a, it feels like such a personal and such a yeah. raw process. You're, you're yeah. like you're wide open when you're writing a song and, yeah. It was quite scary, the thought of going into a room with your chest wide open with somebody else in there. Yeah. And, but then, I, like, trying it and seeing what came out the other end, it's, it's definitely, for me at least, it's definitely a very different experience. Mm. And, it, and it's, it's le it, for me, it feels kind of less like you're channeling something, but it doesn't at all lessen the song that comes out the other end, or at yeah. least up. I can feel like it did, you know, and yeah, it, yeah. It, it almost enriched it, but in a different sense. It's yeah. like a whole other piece. It's, it's pretty yeah, absolutely because you know, if you and I sat down, you would you would see things that I can't see, and and vice versa. And I would pull you in a different way, and you you know, and so that's the beauty of it. But you you need to make yourself um, vulnerable in the first place to to sit there. Um, and not only that, you know, I mean, I, I sit in this room and I, I, I spend weeks on lyrics, you know, uh, to songs, you know. And so um, I, I think uh, I think the expectation should be perhaps to get some ideas going and then work on them, you know, and come back to it. Uh, but I'm sure some people just sit there and, and, and real magic happens. But uh, it, it, it takes... Uh, it takes a, a special connection, I think, for for that to happen. Or, but yeah, it's uh, I, I I should jump off the cliff a little bit more with that. Uh, yeah, and even even if nothing comes out of it, I guess it's an experience, right? Yeah, free cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and how about you, but Have you been doing a lot of shows and stuff? Or, or what, what's been? I've been happening? doing, um, or I was doing, kind of weekly videos. I was covering some of my favorite songs and some people had suggested things and I was doing weekly videos. Yeah. I've stopped that now. Um, and I've been doing, I don't know how many episodes of this I've done now. I've done mm. quite a few at the beginning of That's lockdown. Great. And it's been, it's been lovely, man. Just having, you know, I've, it seemed like people have really enjoyed watching and, and chiming in, but also it's just been nice to, to chat to people and, and catch up when you can't under normal, you know, under the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. 
Yeah. Thank you. And you, you said you've been writing, like mm. musically. I mean, personally, I think you're insanely prolific. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's mad. Like, honestly, the, the, the amount of work you put out is, is insane. Like today, actually, you, um, Here Come the Young was my soundtrack today, all day. Thanks, man. And, uh, and I just tried, I tried to extra, you know, kind of really, really listen in deep. And, and I was out on a walk in Porth Call. And uh, like, oh, man, just, it's such a great album. Like, <laughs> really, you. really is. Oh, like the, I remember, Thanks, man. I remember you gave me the, the CD. I think it was, we were in Focus Wales. I think we were in Wrexham or something in the church. Right, yeah. And uh, we were like talking about, I'd done some new music with, tried out some new production techniques and you said you'd done the same kind of thing for that album, tried some new things. Yeah. And like, it feels like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like fr from the beginning towards the end, there's like an arc where the, the production uh, kind of becomes more and more. It, it feels more, more uh, traditional Martin Joseph at the beginning and then like arcs up into this, more there's like uh more electric guitar and nice bass and there's like textures going on and yeah like oh man, yeah it's great well thank you I, i i didn't plan it we didn't plan it that way um but when jerry you know i i i've always struggled to make studio records that i think reflect the sort of i'm sure you feel the same uh tension but when you play live there's something that cannot be captured in a in a, a, a sterile studio you know when you can light candles and do what you like but it just doesn't quite you know i need to see the whites of their eyes to there's a but, but part of me that you know switches on at that point um and i think that i said to jerry can we make a record that can i reflect you know he came to see me play live jerry uh, uh and um uh and so I went to his studio and I, I would play the songs and then he would just send me home. And then um, uh, he, and I, I, this was a bit disturbing to me. And, uh, but then he said, just, just trust me. And he, he would then send me two or three days later, you know, seven different directions that the song could go in, you know, and I would, wow. so I'd pl play the first one. I thought, oh, no, I don't like that. And the second, oh God, I don't think, like, oh, are you kidding me? You know, and then, well, that's all right. You know, and then, half an hour later I come back in and said well just listen again I suddenly thought you know what? I actually quite do like it yeah. and, and so if, if I'd been in the studio with him I would have just said no I don't know about this you know but it gave him the freedom to try out a lot of ideas without me sort of looking over his shoulder and and, um, and so he pushed pushed the boundaries a little bit with the record and, and he's such a, a brilliant musician and brought this um, bit of an edge to it which was nice you know um, and um, for me I still you know people are so used to downloading songs these days, but for me, I'm still trying to, when I create an album, um, to create a journey through the record, you know, that, that, there's, that we start here and we end there, you know, that, that there's a logic to it. And so maybe that's part of, of what you felt as well, you know. Um, and so um, musically, you bear that in mind too, you know, it's not just about uh, a fast song and a slow song. You're, you know, it, it, it's about trying to tell um, a story and, and, and start somewhere and bring it to some sort of conclusion. It's It's not you know, stuck in stone, but and open to interpretation, but you're still, I have in mind almost like a book, a beginning, a middle and an end, you know, and um, it's nice that you felt that that happened um, from a production point of view uh, as well. Yeah, which is, really, which is uh, like the, it really did feel like there was a, a, a beautiful arc to the whole thing. And like, Oh, I've got to be honest. I broke down at one point. <laughs> you had me crying. <laughs> which song was, was that? It was, um, I'm going to get the name wrong now, but Nothing's Lost in Love. That Nothing's can't Lost be. in Love, that can't be. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah. By the oh. time I got to that song, I was already <laughs> kind of like a, a bit like choked up. And then I was driving oh. back and I just, oh, it's, oh. it was, yeah, wicked, well, that's, man. That's kind. Thanks, man. Thanks. I'm trying to remember what the source of that song is. I haven't sung that one in a while, but I know there's a verse about my dad. Um, um, with the mist and the valleys, and I won't see you now, but I'll run to your arms anyway. And, um, I I went to see my dad um, last week for the first time in four months because he's been he's in hospital um, with his oh, dementia, um, and um, and he was a mere shell of um, of my dad, uh, and and there was not much recognition. So um, it's interesting that you would 
bring that psalm up to me because there's that verse in there. But um, uh, and the, the 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 verse about uh, if a man falls through the sky to the angels, you know, etc., um, which is nine eleven. Um, so it, it it it's 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 about um, it's about great sadness, uh, but the belief that um, we are more than all of that, and and that that there are, there are bigger things afoot that we cannot understand, but that I trust in love, and I don't want to go the other way. You know? Yeah, that's I'm I'm sorry to hear that, man. And, and like, oh, that's all right. That's all right. Oh, thank you. But it, yeah. if that's what it felt like, I think that's why it hit me so hard. Because and and like you said, it's really difficult to f- capture that kind of rawness from the live set to the to the studio set but if like there were songs on the album that when i listened to them i was thinking this voice the voice sounds almost as if it was taken from the desk at a live show and right. then then everything was kind of built around it yeah yeah but like in a great way like yeah. in the way that you can kind of hear the room a little bit and it sounds like it was it was being performed you know mm. thank you well that that's that's kind of the the plan basically we we got the take you know the passion in the song and what have you and then and then jerry um colored it in uh, yeah so um and i i'm constantly looking at ways to make um a record that um i'm satisfied with and that that somehow encapsulates what i want the music to be about and and i'm i'm sure you do the same thing you know it's it's a continuous search you know i uh i have all the toys in this room to um uh, to do things that you know 20 years ago we we're, we're not we, we had to have, have the most expensive studios in the world you know but uh, it's yeah. it, it's it's trying to find um the the, the, the colors to that serve the music best uh, you know, I mean, and it's sometimes all you need is a guitar and a, and a committed vocal and, and it's there and, and everything else is, is it just distracts from that. But sometimes, um, you know, you have a theme within the song and it, 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 it needs sounds to, to enhance that. And, and, uh, that's the job of the producer. And, I, and I've never been a producer as such, though. I, I, I'm beginning to get a little bit more into that side of things. Um, but, um, yeah, making records, uh, I, I like it for about, I know two hours, and then I'm ready to get out. Really? Oh, that's oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I mean, I, the studio. Um, yeah, I, I, I always like. Oh, great! Here we are, and then uh, just give me a live stage and a, a decent sound through my monitors, and you know, people that want to hear. And and, and uh, it, it's, it would be arrogant to say it's easy, but it's, it's, it's where I know, uh, it's, I, I know the magic can happen. Uh, it's trying yeah. to, it's trying to. Um, repeat that uh, feeling within the studio um, that is, I find, you know, so difficult. Um, but uh, it is difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's I, funny because I love the studio. I absolutely love yeah, yeah. recording. But I think it's because it's that solitary mm. tinker in a way, like the equivalent of just having your car in your garage and yeah. tinkering away and like being alone and, and six, seven hours will pass and you've. Yeah done bits and bobs but but you can really tell like when you play in live the times i've seen you play live your sound check that you the, the look on the sound guy's face is always <laughs> hilarious with your sound checking because he's like <laughs> you're just you're just like strum your guitar and say check in the microphone and you're good i'm good a <laughs> little, little, little bit of reverb i'm good and it's just so pro you know exactly what you want to get from it and you don't need much and you just pull it out of the bag. Like it's wow. great, man. It's really good. <laughs> You're coming. Kind of, in fact, a, a lot of pre-work goes into that because I, I the, the important thing to, you know, I, I take my own production from my own shows, but if, you know, we've seen each other at festivals and stuff is I think it's important what you bring uh, to the stage in terms of control over your own tone and everything, you know, so that I know that basically, you know, that basically what I'm given, whoever's out front is 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 going to be top pucker and then then i can tell if they've got a you know their the, the sound system isn't great or whatever it might be so uh, usually it's just a question of put it up and there it is and uh i don't like to keep uh i was I, it was interesting i used to do a lot of support tours when i was signed with sony in the 90s and on the very first night i had a rule that um 
I never sound check for more than uh, one minute, uh, one and a half minutes, because the guys, it was the opening night of the tour, they were under a lot of pressure from whoever, Art Garfunkel or Christopher or John Armstrong, you know, because then they'd done this long, because it was the opening night, they'd done a long sound check, they were frazzled. And the last thing they needed was this, who's this guy now, you know, so I come on, if I give them another 20, they're going to hate, you know, so pull it, plug me and I go, boom, boom, yeah, sounds great, guys, thanks very much. And I think, wow, we like him, you know, and so uh, the next night, it's like, it was. It, it became a habit. Do the sound checks. You know, uh, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> any magic in terms? Of I've lost you. You back? Ah, oh, there it is. There we go. Sorry, so, yeah, you back. I don't know, the gremlins. <laughs> the gremlins. You were saying um, you didn't want a sound check for more than a minute and a half. Uh, oh, you lost me before that. Yes. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll finish what I was saying. So because, um, uh, you know, I said the crew had already just sound checked the big star for ages because it was the opening night. And uh, I, I didn't want to add to their uh, tension or bad feeling. I knew it wouldn't do me any good to sort of try and have a long sound check. So I would just plug it in. And no matter what it sounds, it sounds great, guys. Thanks very much. And they would say, who's this guy? This guy's great. We love this guy, you know. And so the second night, they say, hey, Mark, how are you doing? Great set last night. And then, you know, do you need a bit more of this? And, and so it was always a policy to keep that first sound check, of, especially on a support tour, as quick as you could. So uh, you made some friends quickly. <laughs> That's a great idea. And, and being, a, being a, I guess you were playing solo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always solo. Yeah, uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, it's so, uh, we have yeah. the, the luxury of just plug and play almost you know so yeah exactly and uh but you're yeah. bringing your things to the stage what what do you i notice you always have like a rack of pedals mm. yeah what do you use? there they are down there actually you can can you see those oh sweet yeah what, what's on there <laughs> well uh the one on the the left here this is a uh, this is a big sky, uh, beautiful stereo uh, reverb. Uh, it's incredible quality. This is an H9, which has uh, something like 300 different uh, effects within it, which I can program. Uh, that's a Flint Strymon, which gives a tremolo effect. This is a super octave OC3, which I always have on. It just gives a lovely low end to my... Um, uh, to my the guitar. Uh, this is a delay unit that I really like that Boss make. Um, that's my wireless unit, so I can tune with that, and so it all goes through that. And then this is a switching thing, which enables uh, me just to switch the pedals to um, you know whatever uh, is the next song, etc. So um, oh, and this thing, which I recommend anyone, is uh, my Orchid Electronics. It's a beautiful DI. Um, that just gives a nice warm song, uh, sound and, and control to your... Oh, cool. uh, so, um, yeah, I, I, I use... Sometimes I, you know, uh, play through this and even when I'm recording just to have um, the option of feeding that in or whatever it might be. But, um, yeah, but yeah, that's uh, basically it. And then I, when I go to the States, or, um, it's too big. <clears throat> so I have a little mini version of this, which uh, I do when I, I take over there. Yeah. And do you... Do you ever play uh, electric or always your yeah. acoustic? No, there's my uh, my telly. <laughs> I've oh, been play, nice! Play, playing that today, and I've got um, this lovely old Strat here, um, which I've Ooh. had for like um, I don't know, twenty five, thirty years. Um, and I've also got a beautiful Gretsch, which is in the other room. Um, so um, uh, no, I, I sometimes play electric uh, on stage uh, as well, but uh, mainly. Uh, the acoustic, which is my main weapon here, is the uh, the Loudon, um, this beautiful guitar. Ooh. Although in in the other room, my old Loudon, which I had since '84, we retired after uh, she did about two and a half thousand shows. She's got holes in it basically, uh, uh, where guitars no. aren't, aren't supposed to have holes. Yeah, it's like uh, so. Um, so there's a few here in the studio, and um, uh, others elsewhere. Um, uh, all all available instantly should the sudden. Uh, inspiration come your way you know? <laughs> hell yeah that's what you need i got the same kind of like yeah, little, uh, yeah. little rack going on <laughs> yeah 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 and i've, I've nothing I've fancy got... mike no no it's that's cool it's great it, it, it's about creating an environment that feels productive to you you know so that um yeah. uh here in my studio you know obviously i've got we've got um 
uh, Pro Tools here and, you know, all the latest stuff. But over at the back here, I've got my every writing book that I've ever written a song in, plus, um, you know, uh, books of poetry and, and stuff that um, inspires. And I like, you know, I walk in here, I feel like, okay, this is my, this is my creative space, you know, this is where I can... Um, it takes um, time to build that, doesn't it? Yeah, so it does. It does. It feels does. The space yeah. has that environment. Yeah. I've got, I've got exactly the same thing here. I've got these are all poetry yeah. books. Yeah. Um, this is a great one, actually. I don't know. You might have it, but it's uh, the lyrical poems of Beaumont and Fletcher. Oh right, I don't know that one. It's uh, it just came with another book actually that I bought. I can't remember where, and it's it's really old, really really old, wow. and it's um, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's like uh, properly bound, and the paper's all rough on the edges. You know, it's yeah, nice. It's a beautiful book. But even that can be like a catalyst, right? Just to pick up the book with the with yeah. the rough edges and feel that, and, and it, it, it's creativity is a you know it's a tactile thing as well, I think, and uh, even even just picking up the guitar and holding it, you know, and, and sort of almost to the like you're holding a person and saying, you know, what, what, what you got to say today? What's, what's going on? Um, I believe in that stuff. I, I, you know, it's, it, it's, you, you, um, uh, I, I heard a beautiful comment this morning, actually from Tom Waits. He, was, he, was, he said two things. He just, it was a video where he'd released two albums and the guy said, why are you, uh, why are you releasing two albums at the same time? And he said, well, you know, uh, Sometimes when you've got the uh, when you've got the oven on, you, uh, you, you, you there's no point in making just one pancake. <laughs> 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 or when the stove's on, you might as well make more than one pancake. It was just. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, he said about um, how there's this mysterious place where the song appears, and you, it's often you got to listen for it. He said it's a bit like fishing. You know, you don't want to make a noise and scare the fish away. All this sort of these incredible analogies, uh, and I like that. Yeah. You know, th there is a sense of waiting and 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 for the, for the moment, but it's also it's also a discipline. You know, it's not a um, you know cross your 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 legs and your fingers and sort of meditate and it will come. You you've got to do the work. You, you you've got to sit there and think. Well, you know because. Um, uh, and when you, once you get the original idea, you know it. It takes work. Uh, at least if it, most of really the really my best songs, I feel I'm taking longer and longer to write them. I don't know about you, Dan, but I, I I just I just feel no one's in any real hurry to hear my next song. No one's in any real hurry to hear anybody's next song. They're they're busy doing their thing, and when it comes along, they're really happy. So why why rush this thing? You know, take your time and make sure it's. It's right. Um, and then there's always that honing that takes place when you go out on the road and you play it live because, you know, again, you, I play songs differently in here for the first time until I see the whites of their eyes and then my fingers do different things on the guitar. I can't help it. They just play in a different way. And you think, oh, that's interesting. And there's a bit more give and take on that verse or whatever. And, and so these yeah. things constantly evolve, you know, and uh, who knows that's when it's. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I think that also. One of my favorite things about going and seeing an artist that you've listened to for ages is going and hear those songs in a complete, completely new light. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to go to a live show and hear the record. I want to yeah. hear yeah, that, what, where the song is at now, you know? And, yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, the interpretation of where the person is at now. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I, and, and I always have that, that dilemma too, because... You know, if I if I make if I sing something just guitar and voice in here, uh, you you get your your weight, you shift with the guitar, and 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 you come in the, the timing of your voice is different to if you put a track down and then you think right I'll do the vocal on top now, and and it's not the same. There's the, it's not glue the same way. So I'm always trying to do those one takes and then see if it needs something. You know, um, but yeah, I, I I agree totally that um, I my some of my favorite versions of my favorite songs are, are, are just acoustic versions of them. You know, it's Springsteen doing just something just with the guitar rather than with the, the band's great and all that noise is fantastic, but play it to me stripped back. And that's often my, my favorite oh. version of any song. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Copper Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Copper. Um, have, yeah. Have you listened to the, um, the, the, that Springsteen album of him on Broadway? Oh, lost you again. Oh, you got me? Uh, yeah, sorry, got you now. Did you, did you listen to the uh, Springsteen album on Broadway? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I know. 
I know, I know. I was uh, I was in New York, um, and uh, I looked up tickets. It was a thousand dollars. Oh and, my god! And, and for a, for a brief moment, I, uh, <laughs> I I sort of thought, you know, well, that's a, what how you know that's the you know, but no, I, I but yes, I did. I mean, the thing on Netflix, it, it's it's a masterclass, an absolute um, yeah masterclass, um, and there were some it's, moments. It's, yeah. it's like it's chilling the way that he hmm. the way that he weaves the stories in between the songs perfectly into those songs and like to hear what the songs were written about and to hear about his young life with his family and his father hmm. and his first jobs and oh my god like it's just it is superb. unbelievable yeah it is superb. he he is um he is uh you know, he, he is a, he's like, I don't know, he's like John the Baptist or something out in the desert. You know, he's, he, he is, he's just, he, he is a, a mystic. He is, um, he is an elder. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine, I can't imagine the world without Bruce, you know, he's, 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 no, he's, can you imagine? No, he's, he's inspired so much uh, creativity within me. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah. here he is, uh, what, 72. Um, and that, um, I, I thought that you know, reaching sixty, you know, I know you've got a long way to go, but it, it feels weird. Um, but yeah. but I just feel, I, in some ways, um, I'm sure maybe Bruce feels the same. I just feel like I'm just starting. The, the best stuff is coming. You know, there, there's there's, uh, I mean, you know, when she, if you have travelled this far, then you've got a lot of hopeful, uh, hopefully, some wisdom or some ideas that have actually worked out for you or you've, you've figured some things out not everything not everything but um so that that's interesting is it, when it comes to writing you know because i'm i'm uh, i'm you're, you're writing from a different perspective uh, and you're writing from a point of view of, of, of a journey that's that's well trodden um and if you're open and honest then you might have some interesting things to say and that, that's not to belittle for anybody in any situation a 21 year old a 22 year old you know to speak from where you are with honesty, uh, with integrity, and, and without adding to the noise of the mainstream, then you will do. You will change someone's life with your work. You know, even at that young age, uh, which is wonderful. But um, I just think Bruce is. Um, I, I I I can't wait to hear what the next thing he's going to do. And Western Stars was one of my favorite records. I thought it was a beautiful. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I, I I think that was probably the last record actually vinyl I bought. Yeah. And, uh, Oh, dude, yeah. And I drove back from from a gig in London early last early this year, I think, or something, and played that album all the way home down the M4, and it was just yeah. like it's a good one to keep awake to. That, yeah, yeah. it's one of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was his birthday the other day, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yesterday. He was seventy-two yesterday. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you like um, Jason Isbell? Are you into his stuff? I've never really listened to Jason. I've oh. heard his name a lot. Oh, you've got to, uh, you've got to listen to uh, South Southeastern. I think is the. I'm going to look it up on. Uh, oh, right. Uh, yeah, you've got to. Uh, am I allowed to do this? <laughs> What's your <laughs> cool. uh, Yeah, and I, I think we have some mutual friends even, but I've just never. It's one of those things where you just never get around to listening to them, you know. Well, he's he's taken off now, really. Um, pretty big um and uh yes the, the album's called southeastern by jason isbell and i i recommend that you've got to listen to it it's just it's an amazing record uh he's made Southeast others uh, in uh, fact, just commented saying uh where is it a uh, new band track ghost is a belter oh that's bruce that's bruce springsteen's uh, I think, ah. yeah i think yeah yeah um but um but yeah, Jason Isbell, Southeastern, um, and uh, he's also got his band uh, called The 400 Unit, and they released an album called Reunions a few months ago, and that's a fantastic record. But he's a great writer with, with wonderful insight and um, delivery. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendation for you. Oh, man, I will check that out. What would you recommend to me that I haven't heard? Oh, God, talk about putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> what have I been listening to? That's a really hard question. You can come back to it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've kind of been listening to a lot of singles recently just because of the way life has been and past few months of work has picked up a little bit, which has been great. Um, 
but a lot of finding random bands on Bandcamp and um, and Spotify and things like. I, 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 but recently, being able to search for oh oh, I've got you, I've got you. <laughs> I'm here. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I've been mean, like Bandcamp's great. You can just like search the genre, you know, and find. Uh, oh, Drive By Truckers. Yeah. I've not been the same since he left. Yeah, that oh, was his... um, so he was, he was the lead singer, was he? Yeah, yes, he was the lead singer of the Drive By Truckers. Then he went so. Ah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know a lot of that. I, you um, probably already know. Them, them, but, uh, uh, got you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. We're, we're, we're having trouble here. Uh, I probably... <laughs> the um, I, probably... I can Ooh. never, I can never say their name, and you probably know them. But it's uh, Takeshi's Trucks Band. Oh, I don't know. Them. No. Oh, I think you're gonna absolutely love them. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what I'll do after this. I'll send you a link to, okay. to their their thing. They they're incredible. They're like they're Americana. Um, very Americana, but they, the guy who plays the pedal steel, kind of, he plays it like a sitar, and it, it's this amazing amalgamation of like these two musical worlds coming together, and the lead singer sounds, sounds so much like Bonnie Raitt, but so unique as well, and it's just they're amazing, and they they tour extensively, and I think they're like. 20 25 piece band and they're, they're huge um right. but yeah tr 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm gonna send them to you because i think you'll enjoy them okay cool Great. trucks Great. band Great. yes well i i'm realizing we're running out of time oh, okay. um because instagram is going to cut us off at an hour but i don't want right. to leave without talking about let yourself trust if you wouldn't mind oh, okay. having a chat about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, well, um, do you want me to just tell people what it is or do you want us? To yeah, speak, absolutely, speak? man. Yeah. A bit of background would be amazing and we can have a chat about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, I've, I've always, um, sung about social issues, Dan, for, for many, many years. And, and, um, uh, a few years ago, uh, I was uh, playing a festival in the West Bank in Palestine, and I was uh, I stayed on for a while to observe life for people behind a wall, and I it, it, I got sad and pissed off and <laughs> uh, at the situation there for especially for the for the young people, and uh, I came across a guy there who who runs a, a children's theatre, and he gives them a positive means of expression in such a negative place by uh, giving them musical instruments, um, bringing in photographers so they can learn to take photographs, to paint, to dance, uh, an art center for, for young people. Um, and I, I, uh, I wanted to help this guy a little bit to, you know, so I began to talk about the issues and raise some money and, and gave him some money. And, uh, and Justine, my wife and I were thinking about this and we thought, well, why don't we, you know, I've got this very loyal audience out there. And I think people are, are inherently ger generous, um, but we've hear a lot of stories about how money goes to waste. And so people uh, don't know, you know, where to, where, where's the best place to put their, um, their well hard earned money in terms of giving it to other people. Uh, so we formed this foundation and we change projects every six months and we only work with grassroots organizations. It's often a husband and wife or a, um, a small group of people with a, who see something that's wrong and they want to put it right. And we work with them for six months. I give them publicity from the stages. And uh, at the end of those six months, we give them a check, um, you know, uh, to, to help them with their, their, their work. And we're on our, I think we're on our 13th um, project right now, uh, so which means we've changed every six months. So we're, we're six, seven years in and we've raised over half a million pounds now and given it away to, to wow. these amazing organizations. And, and, and it, it's incredible. It's just, you know, it's just my, my fan base and, and people that come and, 
we ask people to to sign up if they can give us a little every month and we've got about 700 donors that do that and it means that we can really make a difference for these people because these people are, are really they don't waste a single penny you give them they're so committed and we've, we've been working globally in, in Africa and in Haiti and in India uh, in the UK with various projects too and if people just go to letyourself.net or my website martinjoseph.net there's a link to it and you can have a look through all these incredible um, projects that are that are out there because you know, we don't hear about the, the, this stuff, all the good things that, you know, every every day beautiful things are happening across the globe, Dan. Um, you know, often it's very humble, ordinary. Oh, have I lost you? I lost you. You're back. Tell me when you're back. <coughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, can, ah. you, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm back. Can you hear oh, me? Sorry, man. you were talking so eloquently then. <laughs> That's I, all right. Uh, where did I get to? <laughs> you were saying you were saying every day beautiful things happen. Every day, yeah, beautiful things are happening uh, that we just don't hear about, and and there are just these incredible committed people, people like you and me, just ordinary people who do the most beautiful things. But of course, we're, we're, we, we have a whole bunch of negativity shoved down our throats on social media, and, and some of that's our fault, you know. But, um, but we support these, these wonderful small organizations. It makes a huge difference to um, the work that they're doing. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what Let Yourself Trust is. It's just simply an extension, really, of the music so that we can, I can get my hands a bit dirtier. And we've done some volunteer trips where we've gone back to, uh, to uh, Palestine to help rebuild homes that have been demolished and and uh, um, and we've just given a whole bunch of we we just gave uh, is it fifty five thousand in grants away because um, you know COVID has decimated street economies in, in many of these third world countries in Africa and India and Haiti where people trade literally on the street you know their wares to you know sell whatever it might be. So a lot of our partners are right now literally just feeding people because they have no means of income whatsoever right now. So um, as much as it's hard for us in our countries here in the West, the uh, you know COVID has had a devastating effect on the third world that we know very little of uh, at the moment. So um, so that's what we're about, and it's 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 not it's not me. Uh, it's just the incredible people that support us and uh, enable me to 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 give some money to these people. Uh, and to find them. And the, the great thing is that your audience trust you, Dan, because they love you, they love what you do, and it's the same for myself. And it's an absolute privilege. And so I'm, I'm sort of, you know, thinking of getting artists more involved in this because there's, there's a lot that we can do with that trust. Because if you find something, if Dan says, look, you know, I found, I don't know, homeless shelter near Port Call today, and they're really doing great work, and I'd love to help them. Well, people trust you, and they know that you've looked at it and, and that, that it's kosher and, and no one's getting ripped off. And so... Um, so it's an interesting um, little idea, and it's really growing. And um, uh, you know, so I'm very humbled by the whole thing. That's amazing, man. Well, if you you know, if the art, if you ever bring other artists into it, I'm at your disposal. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's good. We we do take artists sometimes to these places to to show them. So we'll we'll work on that. Yeah. That's that's awesome, man. And, and, and did you say letyourself.net is where people can yeah, find it, right? Let, letyourself.net. Yeah, yeah. Or just go to my website, and there's links there as well. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. I, I also noticed on the website that um, uh, that Bob Harris is a patron. He is Uncle Bob. That's his heart. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. Bad. I didn't know. Um, I knew you guys knew each other, and, and obviously Bob and I are friends too. But I I didn't yeah. realize we had a deeper connection. That's oh that's yeah. Awesome. I've known Bob since 91. I met him at the Dominion Theatre when I was opening for Mark Cohen. No uh, way. Opening Memphis, and Bob introduced Mark and uh, uh, was in the wings as I came off and said some very nice things, and we've become very special friends for uh, since that. So, um, yeah, Bob became our patron, and um, he did a great little event with us down in Swansea at a homeless shelter where he came in. Oh. And <laughs> I sang and interviewed him, and then uh, people came, and he signed his books, and... Uh, we gave a check to uh, those guys. This was in the early days, but we, we were able to give them sixteen thousand pounds, uh, which which doubled their, doubled their budget for the uh, for the year. You know, so that's incredible. Uh, when was that? That was ooh, five years ago. Now it was one of our. It was, I think it was our second project, or yeah, something like that. Yeah, but yeah, God, uh, bless. <laughs> God bless. God bless, Bob. 
it's such a small world, man. Bob is, oh, he's such a, just such a generous dude, like with his time and his energy and he's just so open and lovely and yeah, yeah. I, I've yeah. never met anybody who's had anything other than lovely things to say about Bob. Yeah. Well, we've got that in common because I interviewed him too at a festival. So uh, when he had his book out, so and he's the best interviewer in the world because you just ask like half a question and he speaks for an hour. So it's it's, oh, <laughs> it's amazing. It, and the stories he has, you just say, oh, you know, you can ask him anything, and the, yeah. he'll just come out with some insane story about how he was, I don't know, having coffee with John Lennon or something, yeah. and you just yeah. sat there like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Singing backing vocals for Bowie and all that stuff. Yeah, he's he's a star. He's great. And I'm I'm I've just uh, sung on his uh, record that he's doing now. This um, oh, so have I. Yeah, yeah. So that's right. There's uh, there's about a thousand of us, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so I think the, it's going to be the world's biggest chorus. I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. That's that is such a small world, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I I realize that in about three minutes instagram is going to cut us off so. oh okay bro. all right that's a shame can, we cannot carry on they don't let us sign back in we, we can we can sign back in if you want to sign back in I, I do, I don't <laughs> mind. i've got nothing else to do right now if you want to but if, we, if we're done we're done that's fine I'm, I'm, i've asked you i don't want to keep you i don't want to steal the time away from you <laughs> if it's of interest to people I'm, I'm happy to serve no problem at all yeah yeah we, we i mean we can jump back on for a little bit i'll what i'll have to do is when I end this, I'll have to save the whole thing and do the okay. whole blah, blah, blah. But we can jump back on for another another little bit, if you like. Okay, let's do that. Let's do another 20 minutes or so. You know, so so with anyone watching, they'll have to come back in too, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah. So give me five minutes to save this one, and then we'll, uh, we'll jump okay. back on. No worries. All right, man. I... All right, man. I'll see you in a sec. Okay. Bye. Hello, hello. This is a this is an isolation live first that uh, I've just been speaking to uh, Martin Joseph and we are about to c come at you with round two so uh, hope you enjoy the uh, I'll post both versions up so we have one and two uh, here he is. Hey, hey. I'm back. I haven't seen you in ages. Where have you been? <laughs> we beat the system. <laughs> we beat the Instagram system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All about beating the system, man. I love it. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. See, so your your studio, uh, home studio, I guess, right? Yeah. 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 When, when you're recording, do you uh, do a lot of the stuff there and then take it to an, another studio? Or how, how do you normally do it? Um, I did some of that with Jerry when we were we talked about Here Come the Young. I, I went to his studio in London, but then um, I would uh, do a little bit of the you know like backing vocals here and stuff. Um, but um, so for my kind of studio albums, it's a mixture. But I've done a lot of um, like if if we record live shows. Um, multi-track them you know i'll bring them back here and i say live it's just me the guitar but you know stereo this and that and then i'll I'll mix everything here um i record a lot of songs you know just generally i mean i've been working on um this new song today which i started writing yesterday called everything uh, is changing ignorance and cream everything is changing don't even try to intercede So, so you know, doing ideas like that just to you know think. Yeah, well, that sounds it, wicked. Man. It, oh, is that what are you thinking with that? Are you working on a new an album or? Uh, well, I've written. I've got. I, I wrote a song called When We Get Through This uh, uh, when I first got, I was, on, I was in Canada when uh, all the shit hit the fan. So I came home and thought, what do I do? And 
I was a bit reluctant to write about the whole thing, but uh, again, I was thinking about how what we talked about earlier on about the common good, and you know, and and how this was a perhaps a, a, a motif and a time for change right now. So I wrote this song called "When We Get Through This," um, and uh, I started working on it um, here, uh, Dan, and, and then kind of liked the production. I thought this is actually pretty good, so um, we put it out, uh, and it went to number one, and the. Um, songwriters uh, chart on I iTunes see. and Amazon um, and it was all you know literally I did, I did send Jerry played some fiddle on it so I sent him a you know a mix and he played fiddle and sent it back to me um, so um, and I, I, then I recorded some other versions of, of songs and we put this EP together so I did all that here so um, but with that I, this right now I'm sort of thinking I've been listening to a lot of Neil Young lately and and, and he doesn't the, his his records are really interesting because they're really rough and ragged, you know, and oh, they yeah. have this great connection. So I'm thinking, you know, <clears throat> I'm just experimenting with this. For, I, I I just put that drums on. I've just played some bass and I've got this take which I quite like, and I, and I'm just seeing where I might go with it. Um, but I've also got a take where it's just me and the guitar, and it does the job too. So so you know, uh, and I yeah, I've got my writing book there. I've I've I've, I've written some. Uh, I've got about half, I've, I've probably about half an album, uh, I suppose, at the moment, um, which doesn't include when we get through this, which I, you know, I wrote here. But, you know, back um, talking about being signed to Sony in the, in the early 90s, Dan, we were in, um, I recorded, we recorded the first record in um, London and New York. So a guy called Ben Wish, who produced Mark Cohen's Walking in Memphis. And, and uh, he um, was brought over and we decided to, to make an album. So we would be in New York. <clears throat> mixing or something you know and sony music you know wanted to hear what we were doing so we would make a a, a dat tape say of that right uh a recording and they would send a a, a dispatch rider to the studio on times square <laughs> where we were working, right this guy would take this dat tape to jfk it would go on a plane and then it would fly <laughs> overnight so sony would send a dispatch rider to heathrow to pick this thing up take it back to their boardroom where they would play say, oh this is this is the latest mark Jesser. and they say well it's quite good enough. maybe the strings should be yeah tell them we need the strings a bit you know and all that oh, sort of my God. so you know this and then uh the i made an album called sanctuary um uh two three years ago with ben again we worked with each other 25 years later and we were literally doing this remotely you know i did some work with him but then i came back to the uk and i was just saying right there's the backing vocal vump you know there's a new guitar part vump and it, it takes what you know a, 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 a 10 seconds to upload it and there it is so that's how much things have changed but so that you would you and uh you know and i now have you know, and uh, I've got so many toys in this and sampled sounds and, you know, I can, you can make anything happen, but it's, it's all got to be in ultimately in service to the song. What, what, what makes for the best uh, result. Absolutely. But, yeah. But I do, you know, I do like sort of having the freedom just to mess about and see, see what the possibilities might be. And, you know, you, you hear something, maybe you know, you discover, you say, Oh, I quite like that. Maybe I could do that sound on, on my record or something, you know? So it, it's great to, um, indulge and play a bit of piano stuff like that you know so it, it's oh weird. yeah yeah I, you got I a got... Um, um an order oh, over at, here oh my gosh is that a is that a v3 or something what is that it is a it's a hammond something that's all wow. i can tell you <laughs> that's amazing wow it's, it's pretty crazy. i'll uh i'll give you a little look see it's um turn my light on but i actually got it for free uh a friend of mine worked in uh, a college, and they were they were getting rid of it, and uh, they were gonna, literally right. going to throw it skip. And they kept the Hammond like rotary speaker, which I really wanted, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I play it often. I mean, I just That's need great. to super glue that back on. <laughs> That's great. The sound, it's so it's like church level loud, you know. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. And, uh, and I'm not really a keys player, so when I'm writing, I find that uh, it really kind of takes you out of your normal space of just playing the same chords, the same phrasings, yeah, yeah. all Absolutely. that kind of thing. And if yeah. I'm feeling really dumb, I'll use the one finger chord. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, That's it really does make a huge difference when you yeah. play guitar. I think to just have a yeah. little bash round on the keys sometimes, yeah. and yeah. you come out with things you'd never come out with on a guitar. Yeah. 
and I just I just downloaded too. There's uh, there's a I love the sound of upright pianos as opposed to the big grand piano sound, you know. And uh, I just downloaded a, a sample. Uh, it's about forty pounds, but it, it's a hundred year old upright German piano, and you know, so I can play that, and, and it's just. You know, I'm I'm hearing songs as I play just a G chord. You know, you you it just sounds so evocative. You know, and, and uh, so this the, the technology is amazing. It really is. Um, oh, it's unbelievable! Like, yeah. I uh, did it, those covers I was telling you about. I did a few over lockdown. Uh, I did a cover of a Gregory Allen Isaacoff song, and um, very folky. And in the in the chorus on his version. Uh, I think he either sings it or it's on a on a guitar. There's just a couple of notes that are played in the chorus. And I yeah. I played it on a MIDI piano, which I downloaded. I think it was like Spitfire Audio, and it it's oh it's unbelievable. It sounds incredible, and it's yeah. just so weird to think that I'm playing that on a plastic keyboard. And, <laughs> no. But I mean. there's this. Have you heard of Spitfire Audio? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. And yeah, they, yeah well, they, they did. You might have it. They did like a massive pack recently of like free stuff. And it was like yeah. the concert orchestra, um, some really big name orchestras and strings and stuff. And yeah. it's like, yeah. unbelievable. It's just, it, it is. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I, I, I love the fact you've got an, an old uh, uh, Hammond organ in your studio. That's cool. I, I, I've got my grandfather's desk over here. Uh, and, oh, and, see, and now that that stool, I used to. He would sit on that, and play his uh, mini grand piano, and, and I would sit on his lap, uh, and he would show me the notes to play. So um, I like it's nice to have those that the magic that these things bring, you know. Uh, but uh, an old, uh, old Hammond organ, that's cool. I need to get one. I don't know where I would go to be honest, but I need to get yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> from the ceiling or winch, just bring it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I honestly uh it's a beast like i had to have some serious help bringing it in here i bet, and, you, uh, did. I bet you did yeah and yeah. uh I'm, i don't want to know how many spiders it's harboring because it's, it's, <laughs> it's big yeah. every so often there'll be a big beast hanging around so yeah 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 so is, is this is, this is a studio where you live uh, are you in your yeah, yeah, yeah so this is in the garden, in the garden. Um, cool yeah I was going to move recently and then couldn't because of all the sort of stuff. And, um, but yeah, I just, I love this space, man. And like, like we were talking about before, how it takes a bit of time to kind of grow into a creative space. Mm -hmm. This took me a good, I've probably had it for four or five years, maybe something like that, four yes. years. And probably the last six months or just over have been the real sort of time where I've felt this is a creative space, you know? Yeah. And having so much time spent in this room and done so many things. Um, yeah. Just so lucky to have a space like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important. It's, it's important. Cool. Yeah. And I love, I, I love the idea of um, like, I'd love to share this space with people. Like I, I've said it to friends who are musicians, you know, that maybe live in London or, other places that don't have a space like this that like if I'm ever not here or even if I am here and I'm not working, I love the idea of, of this room harboring that for somebody else as well. Yeah, that's nice. Like, like the gear is here. Like I don't want to hog it. I want, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky enough to have these bits and these guitars and the organ and stuff. And I love the idea of somebody else coming in and something else being grown out of that, you know? Yeah. Cool. Cool. That'd be, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's good for you. Good for you. Nice. We get requests now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, charge a good hourly rate, mate. You know, you got to make. <laughs> yeah. Mates rate six hundred quid an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I did have a couple of other questions for you. Oh. Like, shall I get you with them? Shoot. Yeah. Very easy. Nothing super existential. Uh, so. Number one is, do you have a, a favorite touring memory? Ooh. <clears throat> um, my gosh. Favorite <laughs> touring memory. Well, uh, I suppose there, there are many sort of 
bigger highlights in terms of you know when I I did those big support tours, I got to play some incredibly um, huge uh, areas. <laughs> uh, so I I did three nights at Earl's Court, um, you know, that, that yeah. with with Krista Burr, and that had a massive echo off the back wall, you know, and which was about half a mile away. Um, uh, to play the Albert Hall, I played it a number of times just solo. It, it, that's like playing. That's like playing in your studio. It's so intimate and so beautiful. Um, uh, incredible, you know, places I've had the privilege of of playing um, all over the world. Just uh, I've played, you know, um, some of the most uh, famous, iconic venues you could think of, and that which is incredible. But but the, there's, there's there's one particular moment that comes to mind, which which might sound strange, but it, it was actually um, in the Vivea above Rio. I was uh, there working with a landless organization called the MST, Movement of Semterra, who fight for land rights for people in in um, in in, uh, in rural uh, Brazil, and they had a relationship with the uh, with the drug barons that literally run the place. I mean, the police don't go into these places unless they have to, and, and they arranged for me to do a concert uh, up in the favela there to some of the uh, youngsters at the community center. Um, I was there with Christian Aid, and um, and I, I there were guys in this room with balaclavas and handguns, you know, uh, and and I got to play for these these young people, um, and you don't forget moments like that, <laughs> you really don't, because because once you know you get past the okay, I, I I see what this is, and again, music is this incredible way of of um, or art of of of, of uh, gluing people's lives together from different backgrounds and different. Uh, you know, people with different beliefs, whatever it might be, and I remember playing in that room, um, and I, it, it, it's still a, an incredibly vivid uh, uh, moment. So, so um, off the top of my head, I could probably find other things, but that that uh, despite having played these grand uh, concert halls and uh, and what have you, that was um, that was a particular moment that uh, uh, is etched in my mind. Yeah. That sounds incredible. When was that? That was, uh, I think it was around about 2000 or 98, something like that. I can't remember exactly well. Yeah. My God, that's incredible. I can't imagine playing. <laughs> I mean, how how long was your set? I did about 40 minutes, I suppose. You know, with these, uh, just just uh, young sort of teenage Brazilian uh, kids who were, who were just, just beautiful and, and so passionate and, and just listened and you know uh, I don't think they understood everything I said but you know we found some commonality with the music itself um, and you quickly forgot that you were in an area where the police are not allowed to go I mean you know uh, it, it, it was astonishing and also um, playing by the the, uh, the wall um, in, in the West Bank with um, Israeli soldiers looking down on me with guns whilst I I did a concert for a gathered people in a uh, in a makeshift theatre by the by the wall in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the refugee camp there. So um, those those are really the moments because I I think <clears throat> it's because at that moment music feels so alive and so powerful and so uniting um, that um, it, it 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 just transcends any other moment really in terms of, of um, its objectivity and, 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 and the reality of, of what's taking place. Uh, but there's been yeah. incredible, beautiful moments in, you know, in, in, in small rooms and big rooms. And uh, as I say, concert halls and playing uh, at Fairport conventions, a property festival a few years ago, following Rick Wakeman and a 60 piece orchestra. Uh, just me. <laughs> no yeah. I was in my, my cabin, Porter cabin uh, backstage, and it was vibrating with the sub bass from Rick Wakeman, and I'm there with this acoustic six string in my hand. There's eighteen, twenty thousand people out there. I'm thinking, what the hell can I possibly do uh, after this? But it it was a dream. It went fantastically well, and that that was a yeah. So you know, I'm, I'm, I've been very fortunate, and uh, uh, to uh, I might write the book one day. But it, it's um, you know, I. Uh, You've said that on camera now. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My life is a special guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's incredible, right? Because like music can be a 
especially live music, like you were saying, can be so, so visceral. And like, it's not just, it's not just an audible experience. It's like it, when it goes really right, it's this all encompassing, like mental, physical, all rolled into one, mm. like the past, the future and the present. It just, when, when you're in an amazing space like that, yeah, it, it's, it can, like, it's the closest thing you've got to magic. I mean, yeah, I no, really it, think so. Yeah, I, I agree totally. It can be incredibly healing. And even in some pretty dark moments uh, in my life, um, my job was always the place where I could um, find hope, I suppose, uh, even if I didn't feel hopeful uh, myself um, through the process of, uh, of, of, of connecting with a, a group of gathered people and feeling that commonality and that, that um, encouragement that, that, uh, that it can bring. Um, it kept me going many, many times, uh, even through my own turmoils. And um, the, it's, it's unquantified. It's a mystery. Um, and that's why, for me, it's, it will never be about entertainment. I'm so happy we're singing from the same hymn sheet, man. <laughs> uh, Good for you. Well, you, yeah, absolutely, Dan, absolutely. Well, you, you've got some of that going on, I know. And um, uh, yeah, I, 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 you, you, you know, the the, the privilege of it, um, the fact that. Uh, Dylan Thomas said that a, a good poet, the universe is never the same once a good poem is, enters it, and you can cross out poem and put song. Um, that the it, it's not the same, uh, and it may be for one person, it may be for thousands of people, but uh, for someone somewhere that the that that the language delivered with authenticity, with the truth, with some passion, uh, and with vulnerability, all of that, if that is delivered, then absolute magic can take place. Yeah, and I think. Um like talking about that, that, that it, I think it, it gets forgotten, but it's important to remember that there, there is no difference between, or I don't think anyway, between a song impacting a thousand people in that way, or a song impacting one person in that way. Mm. You know, that, that is a, it's a, a life impacted is a life impacted. That's a huge thing. Yep. Absolutely. No, oh, absolutely. Um, the, you know, when I I think of the songs of that they they they're they're not they're not yours, you know, they're not mine. They're they they're something that we father or mother or create and, and shape. But we have no right to uh, put a stamp on what they um, are meant to mean to, to to people. So you know, often I'm sure you've had it. You know, you'll write a song and someone will say, "Thanks for that song," because it means blah blah blah. And it, it has, you know, you're, it, it comes from what, what really? You you didn't mean that when you wrote it, but it it means something uh, completely different to someone. You know, so um, we're 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 custody of a process uh, that enables something to 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 go out there. Um, and obviously, we have ownership in terms of copyright and that means that we can pay our electricity bill. But in terms of the wider implication of that piece of art, um, it, 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 you, 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 uh, you are just part of a part of the process and it goes out there. And, um, it's the greatest job in the world when that works. It really is. Oh man. Yeah. And uh, I think that's one of the, one of the great pleasures about it, I think is that is sometimes hearing back from people, this means this song has meant whatever to me or, this is what I believe that song to, to do, or it's got me through this situation. And you think like, wow, that was the song that I wrote in 10 minutes and I didn't really think it was anybody was going to pick up on it. And, you know, you just never know. No. Nope, you don't. You don't. It's, it's awesome, man. All right, all right. That was one hell of an answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not known for my short answers, so, you know, I'm sorry. I apologize. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> um, well, actually, I've already asked you this one. I said, what was your live setup? And you've shown us your live setup. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we do is another one here, and I've, I've got so much. I've got my trusty clipboard here, man. but it's failing me. Yeah. Uh, is there any 
this was through the Instagram. Um, I get this question a lot through the Instagram uh, question thing. Somebody is asking, is that, have you found any music over the last six months that you're looking forward to being able to see live when you, when you can? Uh, good question. Um, I haven't discovered anything too. Let me just go back to uh, what I've been listening to. Um, let me quickly have a look. Uh, recently played. Okay, let's see. Uh, I, I enjoyed Kate Rusby's covers album recently, um, but no, that nothing uh, that I'm enjoying seeing live. I, the, the, I was disappointed actually because I I had tickets to go and see Nick Cave um, in Cardiff, oh. uh, and I was really looking forward to that. And then they they rescheduled for, for the date when I'm supposed to be, um, God willing, back on the road again. So um, so I'll be missing that. Uh, but I'd, I'd never seen uh, Nick uh, live, and I'm I'm really his music is is very intense and 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 um t is an acquired taste and i and i think i've acquired the taste uh, so yeah. i was looking for <laughs> i was looking forward to to watching him play live but um he's uh, had I, one uh, one unbelievable life uh. yes he has yeah he has but he's he's another one of those mystic sort of guys you know and um and that interaction he does with fans on his website where he's been answering um really honestly and openly and painfully um, you know, after the um, the trauma of, of losing a child um, with fans, and, and and his answers are really uh, full of some very very deep insight and wisdom, and and um, yeah. it's, yeah. it's 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 it, it's impressive, it really is. So, but no, there's uh, to be honest, no, I'm just looking forward to getting out there myself, uh, let alone uh, going to other concerts, but. Um, um, I don't. I don't go to as many concerts as I really like to because I, I, I tend to be constantly on the road. And the, the, most of the time, when I hear people play, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, at, at, at uh, festivals. You know, when you're you're sharing stages with other people. And uh, uh, I was, in fact, last summer I heard Jason Isbell, who we talked about earlier on, play at the uh, same festival I was playing at in uh, in Canada in Manitoba, um, and uh, I enjoyed that. So, um, but. Uh, the, yeah, that was a rubbish answer to your very good question. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was your answer. Basically, sod all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no. well, I want to get out there and play again, you know. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I, I have um, a similar, um, well, I, I get a weird feeling when I go to gigs. I don't go to a lot of gigs. Um, mostly because when I'm there, I'm looking at the stage thinking oh, I'm to be up there right now. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. Or, or I'm, 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 you know, I'm sitting there and everyone else is enjoying it. And, and, you know, Justine will turn to me and say, what are you listening to? I said, I'm just listening to that. He, he could do it turning the bass up, but you know, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't help but just analyze, you know, it's, it's, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah. it's kind of, it's a, yeah. It's one of those things of being a musician that you can never let go fully ever enjoy engross yourself in a show ever yeah. again <laughs> no, that's right because you, you think, yeah. it's always like what what's that what's yeah. that kick drum yeah yeah yeah, what yeah, the, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I'm, yeah. I know i'm also interested in the chemistry of concerts in terms of what else is going on and just watching people's behavior and and listening and seeing the effect uh that music has on people too uh, so I'm, I'm a bit of a, a voyeuristic sort of uh, you know so i, I have multi-vision at gigs and it, it they appeal to me on and i i i'd never want to be down the front that, that wouldn't appeal to me at all you know that, that, no I, no I, mean, I, I, I i'd like to stand back and observe the whole thing and, and just see it as a, a spectacle um so yeah i'm exactly the same when is your uh touch what it happens when is your next show supposed to be oh, real, like real good who knows? Uh, it, it changes daily. We, we, we have some dates booked in for November um, in the sort of, um, you know, with reduced capacity in venues. Um, and I'm trying to do two nights um, to make up for that in, the, you know, two gigs in the same night. Um, but now with the latest thing about, you know, uh, gatherings having to finish at 10 o'clock, 
uh, that looks like that you can't do two concerts now. It just have to be the one. Um, so, um, and we've got some in January uh, uh, as well. So, the, but who knows whether it'll take place? It's all fairly speculative at the moment. Um, but um, uh, yeah, you know, and your European dates and then Canadian dates. The people, you know, everyone is very reluctant to move ahead right now and, and commit to anything. And who can blame yeah. them? You know, so. Um, Whereas you, you put a date in, but it, you know, I, I'm not that optimistic that much is going to be taking place for a little while yet. So we'll continue. Like I say, I'm doing an online show on Sunday at eight o'clock on Facebook. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to launch something to uh, connect with the fans a bit more uh, on a permanent basis online so that we can always do that and uh, make sure that we keep this community thing going. But um, in terms of live music, um, uh, I, I, I just don't know. Um, you think you're getting somewhere and then you hear something says, and it just knocks it back a bit further. So uh, yeah. uh, we shall see. And it's a tough time for musicians. I, I'm not going to sit here and complain, but you know, we, the, 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 um, the, there hasn't been a great bailout in the arts uh, for, for musicians. Um, uh, so, you know, a lot of, people to we there is there is little income you know uh especially you know at certain levels i mean if you're a superstar it, it doesn't matter but you know there are thousands and thousands of wonderful musicians across the world who rely on gigs uh on a you know a monthly basis and and uh, you know to myself yourself to go out and play and do what we do um to pay our bills and um i, I, I there's some very disturbing reports about you know Many many people are, are just going to give up and not and not play music. I mean, because they can't do it, they're going to have to find some other way. And uh, it's way. it's sad, you know, because that that talent, you know, we, we need to we we need artists out there, but um, we need a lot of things right now. So we're, we, you know, many people are suffering. So I don't want to whine on about it, but it's it's these are difficult times. Yeah, yeah, it's the same with the whole like, uh, you know, the venues and the sound people and the promoters mm -hmm. and yeah. everybody. It's as a as a punter going to a music show. Sometimes you you don't realize how much work goes into putting even that one night on, and and behind yeah. the curtains, how many people are yeah. pushing buttons and and lifting guitars and cases and yeah. putting posters on the wall, you know. And uh, yeah, it's all of those people too, and it's yeah, yeah. wild. It, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it's a very cruel. Uh, cruel virus it's it's you know what it's done um and so uh amidst its cruelty we have to ensure that we make the best of this and that we come out uh and uh, the price that we're paying uh is somehow um uh returned to us uh and we return out to each other by kindness and compassion and by changing the world and being more aware of of, of the struggles of other people climate change and uh, please, God, a different president of the United States of America coming yeah. down. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and how about the UK, too? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's... I mean, we could, we, could do, we could do four of these on that subject alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we yeah, we could. Like, yeah. I, you know, like we were saying before with community and, and, and people come into realizations within themselves and within their own kind of ecosystems and things. I, th I think a lot is going to change. And, and obviously that the inherent of being on planet earth and being a human being, there's always going to be assholes. There's always going to be, <laughs> you know, but I think, uh, you know, good news doesn't sell newspapers. And like mm. you said earlier, there's, there's so much good stuff happening. There is. Oh yeah, the, the, and if you yeah. just look, look on your 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 street, you'll see so many good things happening. And I think a lot yeah. of people have realized a lot of things and realized how important people are to them and stuff. And I think it'll carry on, you know. Yeah, I believe so too. But I mean, the, for me, the glass is half full, and uh, uh, and uh, we 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 will get through this. Uh, <laughs> I just quote my songs here. That's uh, <laughs> <yeah>, absolutely <laughs> dreadful. Sorry, um, uh, but 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 we will, you know. And uh, it's going to take time, and we will look back, and this will be a moment in history. And and um, uh, and I'll say, yeah, yeah, the 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 virus of two thousand, whatever it is, and. Uh, but uh, 
you know, it's a lot of things are in the balance right now, and it's a, it's a, it's it's scary, but I still hang on to the hope of the greater good. Um, like you say, it only takes a few to mess it up for many, many people. So it's uh, let's let's keep remembering that the uh, the majority of people are, are good and want good things, and there are many people fighting for uh, to get us out of this right now, uh, looking for. A, vaccines and, and, and caring for people in the most beautiful way and um, so I, I focus on, on, on the positives whilst highlighting the negatives and always raising my voice as much as I can for those who need justice but always remembering that um, it's a beautiful world Amen yeah. and I like you're talking about trying to trying to not watch the news or, like I, I've almost completely stopped watching it because it's just like an overload. Um, somebody's asking, is Martin single? <laughs> no, 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 he's not. That's very kind of him. No. no, not at this. No, not anymore. <laughs> time ago I was. No. Sorry about that. <laughs> there, there, there are different apps for that kind of thing as well. So. <laughs> yeah, but, um, I'll just put my wedding ring up here like this. There we go. <laughs> Uh, I've totally forgot what I was going to say now. That was a great comment. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Let's throw me. Uh, what, what were we saying? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was a beautiful world, and then you asked me if I was single. That's 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 how it went. I think. Oh, there you go. Talk, talk, tell him who asked. It says a man. Ah, called... a man called Rycraft designer. That. That, that's Michael Rycraft, who. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, Michael is a is is a wonderful friend and uh, one of the best designers of album artwork in the world. He's uh, done many man, but he's done stuff for, for Bruce Coburn, and he's uh, he's won all sorts of awards for his design. And uh, he's a he's a resilient and, and beautiful guy, uh, bigger than life itself. And he's one of the he's one of the reasons why I, I believe in the greater good. Uh, hi, Michael. That's great. That's lovely, man. Hey, Michael. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, if you if you need an album cover design, Dan, he's the guy. Seriously, you check it, check him out. He's he's astounding. Cool, man. I'll follow you. I'm yeah. gonna watch this back. A man called Roy Rycraft Designer. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I was gonna say it was on a lighter note. Is that like with the um, not watching news and like I've started taking big chunks of time where I turn my phone off and chuck it in a drawer and just be be a human for a couple of hours yeah <laughs> and but on instagram there's an account called tanks good news okay uh, like 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 the army tank which is a bit unfortunate but it's the guy's name who runs the account just all one word i think tanks good news and every day they just post two or three four posts of something lovely that has happened this week yeah and it's just like it just breaks up your feed. I don't follow anybody, any news outlets or anything anyway. But yeah, should follow them, man. And there's one other as well that's that's just uh, that kind of thing. People well, doing some uh, small goods and stuff. You know? There's one called Upworthy, isn't it? That, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Oh I, I yeah. Do, cool. I, I do make the mistake of starting my day, but I I, I read the BBC News and I read the Guardian. Um, uh, but um, I feel like I need to be informed, but. Um, it, 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 yeah, you've got to find some sort of balance. Um, and, uh, Absolutely, uh yeah. also, you know, that getting outside, you know, I've, I've, I've walked an awful lot. I mean, I, 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 I've said as a joke about my golf, you know, I've, I've always uh, loved the sport and, and, uh, so I work hard at that. So I get out, but, uh, um, you know, walking within mother nature itself to be reminded of how small you are and insignificant you are and the beauty of everything. And, and that, that, that it's important to stay in touch with all that sort of stuff. And what a difficult time it's been for families, you know, three or four children in small apartments and flats and in big cities that have had to uh, isolate and, and um, you know, the pressures of that. Um, I'm going off tangent now, but I'm thinking of, you know, people with mental health issues, uh, domestic violence, uh, all of that has been um, enhanced, I've no doubt, by this cruel virus. And, and um, so, uh, you know. Uh, but, but yeah, I think because I think there's so much going on, to be, it's just, 
like give yourself a break isn't it and whenever you can take that break and take that breather do it and i think a lot of people are learning that that to, you've got to make time you've got to book in time to to go and walk out and do stuff because you just get sucked into doing things yeah yeah you it, it's just like it's a constant onslaught of information and like yeah. i was saying to somebody else this analogy of but what it feels like is that say you've got stay with me on this one okay so it's <laughs> an ice cream shop your favorite ice cream shop and it's closing down and it's closed down and you're super sad about it and then it's kind of the equivalent to every single day thereafter you say somebody saying oh there's no there's not going to be any more vanilla ice cream and then the following days, there's not going to be any more chocolate chip ice cream. And then next day is no more chocolate ice cream and so on and so on and so on. And it's kind of like, it's, it all comes under the same umbrella. It's the same issue that the ice cream shop has closed. But it feels like the, the way that it's pushed to people and the way that sells the news is that they have to keep coming at it from a different angle and sending you new stuff. And and there is new developments every day and there are new things happening, but there's just so much information that I, I found personally anyway to, to kind of um, try and segment it like that and realize what is the same news. It's, it's not a, a new thing and what are we still going through and what's new and you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I hear you, brother. I, I, I hear you. And, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely right. Uh, and I, I have to, I mean, Justine tells me to, you know, stop reading that stuff, you know, come out and let's go for a walk, whatever it is. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, I'm a bit worried about this ice cream now because I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> On top of everything else, there's no fucking ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That, that, that would be it for me. I, that's it. You know, I, 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 uh, ice cream and chocolate. Ice yeah. cream, that's what gets us through everything, man. Yeah, absolutely. It does mean... Unless you're vegan or dairy intolerant, I mean, then... No. <laughs> 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 my, uh, my, my partner will be watching this and she'll have a go at me later because she's vegan, yeah, so... <laughs> we're, we're jesting, we're jesting, we're jesting. <laughs> well, I've got... A couple of questions here they kind of tie into the same thing okay um and i think it might be actually a really nice one to close on um it's basically what is kind of one thing over the past six months one positive that you you've either you've kind of realized or something has changed in the past six months for you, whether it be for you in your world or or outside of your world um well i i suppose what's changed i th i think just i don't sound too um sentimental i, I suppose just a greater awareness going back to what we're talking about and about you know just the sense that that um so many acts of kindness and just love and compassion and the way despite the f fractious headlines um that, that 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 i just feel the good when i walk the streets when i'm when i'm in tesco or whatever you know that i i just see pleasantness uh, I, I don't see aggression. I, I you know, uh, despite all the screaming headlines, I don't see the evidence of that in everyday life, um, which is an interesting case study. But I had, I had the most beautiful little incident um, last week, um, which kind of just sums this up in a, in, it's a, it's in a, in a lovely way. It, it, it's not nothing heroic here, but. I, my mum's 86 and obviously my dad is in um, in hospital as I said um, he's he's been sectioned uh, because of his um, uh, dementia and, and so we haven't been able to see much of him and, and it's a difficult time uh, and um, uh, mum came down and stayed 
that's for the weekend and we we went for a walk up to a reservoir not very far from where i live here in rural wales and um and we got there and it was a uh, i thought it was an easy climb for her but I, it was a bit steeper than i thought and she's 86 but she took this thing on no problem at all you know two miles there two miles back uh you know and there was one moment where i had to really help her across this river uh which was fantastic anyway but we got there to this reservoir and she was so happy and so glad she'd been there and uh, there was a bunch of people. <clears throat> it was a beautiful day. Um, and there was this uh, lovely um, Arabic family who came past us with a, uh, a very, very uh, newborn baby, you know, and, and uh, they went past. And, um, and my mother said to uh, this gentleman, um, how old is the baby? And he said, uh, eight weeks, eight weeks. That's right. Oh. Um, and... Um, and I said, "What's her name?" And I, I can't remember what exactly what it said, but it, it was it was um, uh, it was Arabic for for light. That was her name, which was just beautiful, you know. <clears throat> and I said, "Wow, eight weeks." I said, "Well, she's the youngest uh, here, and this lady, my mother, she is the oldest here, you know." And he said, "Well, do you mind uh, asking me asking you how old you are?" You know. So uh, my mother said, uh, "Well, I'm I'm, I'm eighty six, uh, and he said to her, "Well, may you." May you may you live for many more years, uh, and then I said to him, "Inshallah," which is uh, Arabic for "God willing." And he said, and he looked surprised because I spoke something just a small amount, uh, you know. And was, for a second, there was just this awesome uh, connection uh, for me. Anyway, I felt I felt it, you know I'm here with my mother, you know, I, uh, and this this gentleman is a complete stranger in his family. He's a Muslim, uh, you know, and, and all the rhetoric and, you know, and here we are just human beings sharing these some beautiful words, just a beautiful moment together out of nothing, out of uh, a chance meeting at a reservoir uh, in the middle of Wales. Uh, and I just felt, I just felt love. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was magical. Um, so that's not a great answer to your question, but it's just, it's just an incident. But it's um, I do, honestly, man, that is the best answer I could have. <laughs> <laughs> but you and, know, and I know, mean, there was, yeah, there, there, absolutely. There was, there was no there, racism. It was just, you know, there was, it was, it was as pure as pure, as heavenly, as spiritual, as as humanistic, um, as a moment could possibly be, um, and there therein resides all the hope in my heart, um, and it's all I need to know, and it's 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 what I believe in, uh, and I'll sing about it to my dying day. So you know, and, so and, those are the moments life are made of, man. It was great. It was lovely, and. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't know who that gentleman is or where he is now, and, and but I, I'll never forget that moment. It was beautiful. He said, "May may you live for many years more." I, I, I say, "Inshallah," and the look of surprise on his face when I spoke <laughs> that in Arabic to him. Uh, God willing, uh, uh, it was lovely. So yeah, um, it's, it's going to be all right, but there's some tough times ahead. Hello. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> I've got you again. I'm back. I'm back. So I've literally stood by my router now. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's me or what. But, uh, oh, anyway, man. there we go. But, yeah, uh, I mean, I had a similar moment. I, actually, I don't. I even want to taint that moment with the story because that was beautiful. <laughs> no, it's all right. But it was. Uh, uh... Yeah, yeah. I was just. I well, I was. I was. I like you. I walk. Uh, walk a lot and, and go out. And, like being out and about and uh, I was walking along the seafront in Ogmore the other day and there was an elderly gentleman walking along with his dog um, and the guy was on crutches and he was moving really really slowly and there was nobody else around anywhere and I just kind of thought like I have 
always really I, I like you know if there's somebody um somebody alone especially if they're elderly i like to talk to them and because you know you don't you don't know when uh you know they're potentially living alone and you don't know when they speak to people that often and stuff and and my dad lives alone and uh i think about that a lot and then this guy like so i just caught his eye just to say hi and maybe say you know oh it's a beautiful day isn't it how you doing kind of thing and he yeah. just he stopped in his tracks and just said do you want to hear a joke? <laughs> <laughs> there was this opening gambit. Just, do you want to hear a joke? And I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd absolutely love to hear a joke. And uh, I won't repeat it. It wasn't very... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that, that tiny exchange, man. And for the rest of the walk, I just had a, a solid grin on my face. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's just those moments, man. It's, it's, it's all about connection, isn't it? That's what all it ever comes down to, really. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not into. And thanks for doing this, Dan. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Yeah, thanks for uh, doing these interviews and connecting people. And uh, you know, it's a it's a great idea, and I, I'm sure it takes a bit of effort and time on your part. So, uh, you know, well done you for doing this. Thank you, man. And I, I, uh, I really appreciate you coming on and spending yeah, all, all this time with me. So, pleasure, mate. pleasure. No problem. It's been a real pleasure, and hopefully touch wood and everything that is lucky that uh one of these days soon we'll we'll see each other in the flesh so absolutely we can do that we can do that and thanks to everyone who's uh, joined in and uh been part of this yeah, yeah big time. people being yeah. chatting and commenting and everything so yeah thank you guys i appreciate that yeah i'm gonna go put my dinner in the oven now <laughs> yeah i'm gonna do the same thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean i'll go back working on that song but uh thank you thanks very much no, thank you too, man. It's been a real pleasure, and um, uh, I'll speak to you soon. I'm sure. Will do. All right, bro. Thanks, man. All right, Take man. Care. See you soon. Right, bye, bye. 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 All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We got a bit wild up at the end here. It was uh, Martin is an amazing man, and we, that was a great chat. And uh, yeah, so that was emotional. So. Um, Thank you very much for watching, guys, and tuning in on the first one and the second one. Uh, that was wicked. Uh, you guys are great, and you were commenting so much. And, like, sorry if I didn't get to any questions or comments, um, but uh, it's really appreciated you guys chiming in. And, uh, yeah, I'll be do I do the I've been doing these for a while, so I will be back next week with another episode. Um, and Martin is doing a, a live show on Sunday on his Facebook, so check that out. All right, guys, thank you very much. I will see you soon and have a great weekend.